How to Sew a Storage of Pots with Amber Makes Sewing School, available in two beautiful prints. You'll learn how to sew curved seams and upcycle your empty food teams at the same time to make a beautiful storage of pots. Cutting out. Take out the fabric panel from your kit and give it a good press. If you have a look, you can see all the pieces are labelled with a label above each one. When you cut them out, cut out the printed label and pin that to the top edge so that you remember which piece is which. There are enough pieces on the fabric panel to make six pots, including labels as well. But you can see here, everything is labelled, so make sure that you cut out each one. There's also some, some extra labels on the top that you can stitch to your pot. Once you've cut them out, you can see here I've pinned the label to the top of each one. This is really important so that you get the right outers, linings and bases together. Those are all the outer pieces and then I've got all the lining pieces in another pile. And then finally, all the bases. And the bases are different sizes for the different pots, so it is important that you know which is which to make the nice matching set. You'll also need the labels. Now we've left some labels blank, blank at the bottom. So if you want, you can write your own name on there, depending on what you want to put in your tin. There was some extra little stitch with love labels that if you like, you could sew to the bottom of the tin if you're giving them away as a gift. You'll also need some wadding because this is what gives the tins the structure and some empty food tins. In the instructions, it tells you what size tin I use for which pots. But you'll need a collection of these. What a great way to upcycle all those empty food tins. Preparing the pieces. The storage pots have wadding between the outer and lining to give them extra body. So all of the outer pieces now need to have wadding attached. I've used H640, which is a fusible wadding, so you can just press it into place. But you could use any wadding and then tack it into place. Place all of the outer pieces onto the wadding, you'll need to use the bodies and the bases and press or tack them into place. Once that's done, you can roughly cut round each of them and then cut along them carefully so that the wadding is level with the raw edges. With the body pieces, I've used my rotary cutter and ruler, but you can use scissors for this. But just make sure that the raw edges and the wadding are lining up. Once you've cut round all of the body pieces, you can then cut the base pieces. Remember, you're only attaching the wadding to the outer pieces. For the base pieces, I'm going to cut this using a pair of scissors, but just cut carefully to make sure that you don't cut into the fabric, but you're just trimming the wadding. Obviously, if you've used a non-fusible wadding, you will have tacked it into place around the edge. Just make sure that it stays laying flat and give it a press to be sure. But with this fusible wadding, it simply presses into place so it's just easier to use. Now all of your body outers and base outers have wadding attached to them. And I've still kept the labels on them as I've done this so I remember which piece is which. And put these all into a pile and then you can start making one pot at a time. Finishing touch. Quilting the outer fabric pieces of your storage pot will give it extra strength as well as add detail, but this is optional. Now, if you want to do this, quilt one piece at a time, but take the label off before you do it so you don't stitch over it and then put it back on afterwards. Now, there's various different ways you can quilt these. What I've done with this pot is I've decided to follow the lines that are printed on the pattern. Now, with most waddings, you don't need to put an extra layer of fabric behind it to just quilt. I've got the fabric on top and the quilt and the wadding underneath. If you find that your wadding is getting caught in your machine teeth at all, then just place a very lightweight cotton or lawn fabric, muslin, something like that behind to stop it get the wadding getting caught. But with most waddings, this won't happen. Set your sewing machine to a slightly longer stitch length. I've used a three here. If you've got a walking foot, use that. But this isn't very thick and it's not a big piece, so you should be able to ease it through if you don't have a walking foot. You can use a thread which matches the fabric so that the quilting stands out. 
or contrasting thread is up to you. Depends how much of a detail you want to add. But again, the quilting is optional. So you can see here that I have just sewn along the printed lines. I've just done one at a time. And then when you do the base pieces as well, this does help to give it some structure. Again, you can quilt whatever design you like. Do take the label off before you quilt and then put it back on straight afterwards. Otherwise, you won't remember which is which. For this base, I've just quilt sewn in a circular line around the edge through the centre of the pattern. But it's up to you how you do it. If you want to quilt using straight lines or diagonal lines, then draw these onto the fabric first using an erasable pen. You can then quilt along them and then just iron it off afterwards. So do it quite slowly if you want to get the lines accurate. But it does add an, a nice bit of detail. And if you haven't done quilting before, this is quite a nice small project to have a practice on. So that's one of the lines of the base finished. And then continue this to quilt all of the pieces. So that's that body out of finish. You can see if I show you on the other side all the lines. I've done some more circular lines on this one. With the other ones, I've done some have got horizontal lines. Some I followed the pattern, like the squares on here. Another this one, I've just got some horizontal lines that I drew on first. And then with the bases, you can add lots of quilting or just a little bit. With this one, I just stitched lines across and that one I stitched four lines. And there's your finish, pieces finished. Adding labels. If you want to add a label to your storage pot to decorate it, then do that at this stage. <laughs> you can just cut the labels out and sew them on, but I find it easier to use Bonderweb. I pressed a piece of Bonderweb over the whole of the label place piece just because I found it easier and less likely to get caught on the iron. But you can cut out one label at a time and press Bonderweb to the back. If you're not using Bonderweb, then just cut round the outer edge of the label like I'm doing here. The bonder web will just help to make the placement easier because you can press it into place before you sew, but you don't have to use it. So cut carefully around the outline of the label that you want to use or the label that you've drawn on to write your own words or label. Now take the pot body outer that you want to put the label onto and fold it in half to find the bottom, the centre of the bottom edge. You can see here I've just put a pin. Now, you need to measure upwards from the bottom. The measurement is different for the different size tins. That's because the, the top of the body outer will fold over to form a cuff. And then you want this label to be central. So for the different body outers, the measurements are different. But if you look at the instructions, it will tell you what these are. Now, place this label centrally on that mark. So at the bottom edge of the label is central on that mark. I'm just measuring to be sure. You can see I've marked the centre and then what I like to do to get the make the placement easier is put a pin in opposite corners where the label is. So I know it's in the right place. Then you can take the label off and remove the Bonderweb paper backing. If you score across in the centre with a pin, you can then just peel the paper backing off. Obviously, if you've not used Bonderweb, you won't need to do this. Just place the label on top. Make sure that it's in the same place and it's positioned centrally, but those marking pins will help to guide this. And then press it into place. If you're not using Bonder Web, then you could pin it or tack it into place. But that holds it nice and securely. And you can see I've done the same thing with all of the other labels. The measurement, as I said, is different for where the bottom of the label is. They're all placed centrally across the body outers, but they're just a different distance up from the bottom. So there's all of my body outers with their labels pressed into place. And now you need to sew it into place because the bonder web isn't a permanent fix. You can use a blanket stitch by machine like I've done here. You could use a running stitch by hand or just a top stitch around the edge of it. Sew all of the labels into place at this point and then all of the body outers are finished and ready to be made into storage pots.
making a regular storage pot. All the storage pots are made in the same way, they're just using different sizes. So I'm going to show you how to make the regular storage pot. So take all of the pieces for the regular storage pot, you've got the body outer lining, the base outer lining. All the storage pots are made in the same way, so follow these instructions whichever size you're making. Let's start by sewing the body outer. So fold the body outer in half so that the short edges match. You can see here that the it's right sides facing, so the printed fabric's on the inside and the wadding is on the outside. Pin it together at either end and then pin it together across the centre, making sure that the raw edges match up and it needs to be the short raw edges because we're sewing the body out to together to make a tube. Now sew together down the short edges. So if you place it under your machine foot, You've got the wadding on the top and you're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance but this is listed in the instructions. Reverse stitch at the beginning just to secure the seam and then sew all the way down, removing the pins as you go. With this H640 that I'm using, it goes under the machine quite nicely. If you do get, find it gets caught on your foot, just raise the presser foot, smooth out the wadding and then sew down to the bottom and reverse stitch. And now you've sewn the seam of the body outer. Now you need to press this seam open and flat. So do this from the wrong side first. Open it up with your fingers and then just use the point of your iron to press the seam because you don't want to touch the wadding too much with the iron, particularly if it's hot or it will melt the wadding. So just use the point of the iron. Now to make sure it's really flat, Turn the body outer right sides out and making sure that seam is flat because of the wadding it does stick out a bit. So just run your fingers along on the inside, make sure it's lying nice and flat and give it a press again from the right side. And that will make sure that the body outer seam is flat and ready for the next stage. Marking the quarter points. You now need to sew the straight bottom edge of the body outer to the circular curved edge and it's easier to get it, this place correctly if you mark the quarter points. So make sure the body outer is wrong sides out and fold it in half so the seam is on one side and then mark the fold on the other side with a pin like I've done. Now match that pin to the seam so that they lay one on top of the other. Mark the fold on the right hand side with a pin just through the wadding and then mark the fold on the left hand side with the pin. Now open it up and put those pins back in securely. So working around, just make sure they're in securely because you just place them through the wadding. They need to stay in place. So now you've marked the quarter points of the bottom edge of the base outer, the body outer. You now need to do the base outer in the same way. So fold the base outer in half and place a pin on the fold on, the, on either side, just through the wadding like we did before. So these are the halfway points. Again, Take the pin out, put it back in exactly the same place, but just making sure it's going through the wadding and the fabric. And now you need to fold it in half. Now I'm going to move the label because it was going to get caught in that. If you're going to sew the body out as straight to the base out, you can probably take the label off. But I like to keep mine on until the end just to be sure. So make sure those two pins are meeting. And again, place a pin in the fold on one side and place a pin in the fold on the other side. Put the pins back in again so they're going through the fabric and the wadding and these are now the other two quarter points so you've matched, marked the quarter points on the base outer and the body outer as well. Sewing the body outer to the base outer. To help ease the straight edge of the body outer around the curved edge of the base outer we're going to make some little snips. The snips need to go along the bottom edge. They need to be about a half an inch apart but no longer than a quarter of an inch because that's the seam allowance so just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. Don't disturb the pins as you're doing, just make these little snips and this helps to open out the bottom edge and this is the key fact when you are and technique that you use when you are sewing a straight edge to a curved edge. So you can see there's all the little snips. If the pins have disturbed at all, put them back in. Now take the base outer and place it inside so they're right sides facing. Match the seam on the body outer to one of the pins on the base outer. There isn't really a right way up for the base so it doesn't matter which one and pin together. Now to take the next set of quarter pins of the base outer and the body outer, match them up, remove one 
and pin the two pieces together. You can then take the extra pin out. So move round to the next quarter point, match the quarter point of the base outer to the quarter point of the body outer, pin them together, making sure that the pins meet exactly, and then you take out the other pin, and then finally match up the fourth quarter point. Now these are anchoring points, and by having them spaced exactly apart like this because you've measured them earlier it will help to get the base to fit the body neater and this is the best thing to do when you're matching sewing a curved seam now you can pin between each of these points because you snip the edge of the body outer you can open it up slightly and splay it. it's almost splaying the edges if you pin it together make sure the raw edges are matching and then you can open up this helps to get a really nice fit and always pin it with the body outer on the top so that you can open up those little snips. Always work on one quarter at a time. Make sure that that base outer is nice and flat before you pin it. Because if you pin it together with any little creases or tucks in the body outer, in the base outer, then that will show and you will have those sewn into the seam. But because you've made the little snips, it means you can open it up and it will fit really nicely. And it really is worth taking the time to snip it and pin one quarter at a time. And you'll get a really neat finish then. So once it's pinned all the way round, you may need to remove some pins just to make sure everything's laying flat, but do take the time to get it to look right at this stage. Now once you've got all the way back to the other side, you've now pinned the body and the base together and it's ready to sew it. there you can see everything is pinned nice and neatly together and you can sew it now normally i would always say do not sew over pins take them out but when you are sewing a curved seam like this especially on a small piece it's a lot easier to keep the pins in place just because you are having to deal with sewing the curved seam to remove the pins as well it starts shifting so what you need to do is make sure that the pins are placed vertically and you sew slowly if you slow slowly then the needle will just go over the pins if you sew really fast then it will break the needle but i find it a lot easier to do this obviously if you don't want to sew over the pins then remove them just before you meet them make sure you always sew with the body outer on top and the reason for that is that the base is the flat section that's the circular flat section whereas the body is the one that we are curving and moving and easing to fit so every now and then as you're sewing just check, lift up the base outer to make sure it's still laying flat. You can see that the body outer is flat because you're sewing on top of it. So just check every now and then that the base is flat and sew nice and slowly and carefully all the way around until you get back to where you started. Stitch on top of the seam that you started with a little bit and reverse stitch to finish. And then that's the sewing of the body outer to the base outer complete. So you'll need to take all the pins out now, unless you've taken them out as you've gone along. But as I say, it is entirely optional whether you do that. But if you do, just sew very carefully. And if you don't, just remove the pins just as you meet them. So now you can see it all matches. Now, before you do anything else, just turn the whole thing right sides out and check that that seam is nice and neat and that you haven't got any pleats or tucks. If you do, just undo the seam where there is a, a light, slight pleat and redo it. You don't have to redo the whole seam. Now, at this stage, it's worth pressing the seam so it's on the edge just because it's easier before you start adding the lining. So with the body at the top and the base on the bottom, roll the seam between your fingers when it's right on the edge, give it a little press. 
Obviously, you'll have to work around in stages. But this extra pressing stage with the seam on the edge will just give your storage pot a little bit more structure and it is easier to do this at this point. So press all the way around and then the outer of your storage pot is now finished. Sewing the body lining. The body lining is sewn together in the same way as the body outer but with a gap left in the seam for turning. So fold it in half with right sides together matching the short edges. Make sure the raw edges match up and pin it together at the top, along the centre and at the bottom. Just like you did with the outer piece but we need to mark the turning gap first. So to start with, measure one inch up from the bottom edge and mark that with a pen. Now, for the regular tall and large tin, you now need to measure three inches up from the bottom edge. That leaves a two inch turning gap. And then you sew either sides of it. For the short tin, the gap needs to be a little bit less just because of the tin is smaller and you don't want the gap to be above the cuff. So with the short tin, you measure one inch up from the bottom and then you measure two and a half inches up from the bottom. All of these measurements are in the instructions though. So once you've marked the gap, place the lining under your machine and reverse stitch at the top and sew together all the way down to the top mark that you mark for the turning gap. Reverse stitch at the end of it just to secure the edge of the turning gap. Take it out from under your machine and then move down to the second mark. Make sure the needle goes down into the mark and you're quarter of an inch from the edge. Reverse stitch to start, work all the way down and then reverse stitch to finish. And then you've left that turning gap unstitched but you've secured the seams either side. Now you just need to press this seam open. So start with press the seam to set it and then open it up, still with wrong sides out. Open up the seam with your fingers because the turning gap isn't very long. It's easy to open up the seam either side and that will just hold the turning gap over. Once you've done that, turn the lining right sides out and this will just help it to stay definitely flat. Push your fingers inside just to make sure the seam is still laying flat. And then give it a press from the right side. And that's held the turning gap folded underneath. So you can see the turning gap's left and the body lining is now finished. Assembling the lining. You now need to sew the bottom edge of the body lining to the baseline. This is done in the same way as you did the outer. So start by marking the quarter points on the body outer and the quarter points on the base outer in the same way as you did. Now snip the, sn the little clips in the bottom edge of the body lining. Because you haven't got the wadding in the way now, you can actually do this. If you make sure the raw edges are matching up, you can fold it in half like I'm done and then you can cut through the two layers at the, at the same time. It's just a bit quicker. But don't do this with the body outer because of the wadding, otherwise you'll cut inaccurately. Now, in the same way as you did with the outer, place the base lining inside the body lining, match up the seam with one of the quarter points of the base, and then work your way around to match up the other quarter points. Always make sure the raw edges are matching. Take out one pin, place it so you're sewing the two together, you're pinning the two together, and then put the other pin in place. So take out a pin, pin the two layers together, and then you have anchored it at all of the quarter points. So this is an exact repeat of what you did with the outer. It's a bit easier though because you haven't got the wadding in the way and it's easier to ease the body to match up with the base. So again in the same way as before, pin together between those quarter points. Open up the snips that you made in the outer so that it fits nice and neatly around the base. Make sure that the base stays laying flat at all times so there aren't, you're not pinning any little tucks or creases into it. When you're pinning between these quarter points, if you find that when you get to the next pin that you haven't got enough of the body or 
too much of it to fit around the base, just undo, take out the pins in that quarter section and redo it and open out the cut section a little bit more, a little bit less. But because you're working on one quarter at a time, it doesn't take too long to adjust it. So now I've worked all the way around and the base lining and the body lining are all nicely joined together. I'm going to sew it together in the same way. Again, make sure that the body lining is uppermost and the base is underneath. Work round slowly and carefully. Make sure that you adjust it as I'm doing here so that the base is laying flat. I'm doing mine where I'm sewing over the pins, but again, if you do this, sew very slowly. And if you don't do this, and you prefer not to, then just remove the pins just before you meet them. But you can make sure that there are no creases or tucks or pleats in the out on the in the base section or the body section. So just keep having a little check underneath to make sure the base is laying flat on your machine and that you're not sewing in any pleats. And keep to that quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around so that you get a nice neat curved seam. And then when you reach the place where you started, sew on top of for a little bit, about half an inch, and then reverse stitch. Now take out all the pins. Turn it right sides out just to check that the seam is nice and neat and even with no pleats or tucks. And if there are, just undo that small section and redo it. But once you're happy with that, then you can press the seam. Now, we're not going to press the seam so it lays on the edge like we did with the outer because that won't happen with the lining because it will be the other way around. So instead, we're going to press the seam open. So the best way to do this, because you can't really press it open and flat, is to have the base laying flat with the body on top and then fold the edges of the body over and press that section flat because when the lining sits inside the outer you need to have this seam flat it will just give a neater finish but you don't want it right sides out because it will sit the other way around so just fold over peel over the top edge of the body and press it open and again, this just gives a neater edge and it will help the lining to sit snugly and more and flatter inside the outer at the next stage. So there's your lining section finished. Sewing the outer to the lining. The outer needs to be right sides out and the lining wrong sides out. Remove any labels now at this stage because you know which piece you're going to join to which and they'll only get in the way. Now place the outer inside the lining and they will be right sides facing. Take the top edge and match the side seam on the outer to the match to the side seam on the lining. Although you've pressed them open, just make sure they're still laying flat. Place one seam exactly on top of the other with the raw top edges matching and pin together. Now pin the lining and the outer together all the way around. They're exactly the same size so they will fit ni ni nicely. Pin them together across the top, making sure that those raw edges match and that both the outer and the lining are laying nice and flat next to each other. Now you need to sew the two together all the way around the top edge. So place them under your machine. Obviously it's quite a small circle, so you'll need to adjust it a little bit as you go. So make sure it's laying flat and using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, sew together. So you just sew along a few inches and then keep the needle down and then just move the fabrics around slightly so that they're laying flat and then you'll just get a neater finish if you work on one little section at a time. Make sure 
that the fabric is laying flat underneath so that you don't sew any pleats or creases into it. And just adjust it round as you go. And keep into that quarter of an inch seam allowance. I always like to start stitching just a little bit beyond the side seam, not on top of it, because otherwise you're having to start and stop and reverse stitch on top of all the extra layers. So always start just beyond it, but not actually on top of it. It just makes it a little bit easier. When you get back to the place where you started, stitch on top of the seam for about half an inch, then reverse stitch to secure the seam, and then that's that seam finished. Once you've finished the seam, pull the two apart so that you've got the outer on one side and the lining on the other. And we're now going to press this seam open and flat. If you do that at this stage, it's much easier to get this laying on the edge when you turn it right sides out in a moment. So just open it up with your fingers and press it. You'll have to do this one section at a time. So press that one section then turn it round a little bit, open up the next section this bit is really worth doing because when you finish your storage pot that you want, this seam is going to lay right on the edge and it's a lot easier to get for that for you to be able to do that if you've actually pressed this open at this stage. So just work round and press one section open and flat at a time. Because you've got the wadding there, try to just use the point of your iron so that your iron doesn't touch the wadding because if it's too hot, it will melt it. If you've used a cooler iron, it's not so bad. Now, once you've done that, put your hands inside the turning gap in the lining and with your fingers, take the bottom, the base outer and then pull it all the way through to turn everything right sides out. So now your outer and your lining are joined together at the top edge. Push your fingers inside just to push out that seam because you pressed it open early, it's a little bit easier. Now you need to close the turning gap. You can either top stitch it by machine or slip stitch by hand. You can see with this storage pot, I've top stitched it by machine. So you just sew the turning gap closed. But actually with these storage pots, I prefer to slip stitch. It's only a small gap and it will lay flatter. So to do that, use a hand sewing needle and some thread and, th and thread the needles just on top of the seam that's at the bottom of the turning gap. Work a couple of small stitches on top of each other. You will have an end sticking out, but you can cut that later. Now, to do the slip stitch, run your needle underneath the fold of the fabric on one side, make a small vertical stitch and run it underneath the fabric on the other side. So this is the same as a ladder stitch. The needle goes under the fold of the fabric. It comes over to the fold of the fabric on the other side of the turning gap to make a small vertical stitch. Because this is this storage pot fits the tin very snugly the slip stitching will make the lining lay flatter inside it still will work if you machine top stitch it's entirely a personal preference i just prefer to slip stitch when you get to the other end of the turning gap work a few small stitches on top of each other just to secure that line of sewing you've just done snip off the thread and then you can go back and snip off the other end and now that's the turning gap closed so give it a little press just to make it nice and neat and the outer is now attached to the lining. Finishing off. Push the outer inside the lining so that the outer base seams touch the lining base and we're going to top stitch along the top edge but from the lining side which isn't how you would normally do it when you do something like this but because we're going to turn the top over to form a cuff this is the line of the stitch the side that will be showing so to get a neater finish and to be able to see and make sure it's straight it's best to work from the side that you will actually see so make sure that the seam is lying right on the edge by rolling it between your fingers and then press it all the way around because you pressed it open early earlier it's a little bit easier and then we can top stitch around the top edge so i'm top stitching eighth of an inch from the edge and you can see I'm using the line on my um, needle plate to follow and I've gone for a slightly longer stitch length of three just because it makes it a bit neater and a little bit of decoration. Now this is a line of stitching that you will that will be visible so go a bit slowly so that you can make sure that you follow the guidelines on your needle plate to keep it straight 
If you want to use a contrasting thread to make this top stitch stand out, then do that now, because obviously the thread that you use in the top will show on this side. But just work slowly and do one small section at a time and then readjust the fabrics just to keep this top stitching nice and straight. This holds the lining to the outer so it gives a neater finish, but it also adds decoration as well. When you get back to the place where you started, simply stitch over it by about half an inch and then reverse stitch to secure the end of the seam. Once that's done, you've finished top stitching the top edge. You can now turn it the other way around so that the lining is on the inside and the outer is on the outside. Push the lining right inside, making sure that the base seams match up exactly. Now we're going to measure down for the cuff. So if you measure two and a half inches down from the top edge, remember these in measurements are in the instructions, and do it in four or five places all the way around. This just means by measuring first before you turn the cuff over, you know it's the right measurement. It just also looks a bit neater if the cuff is the same all the way around. You don't have to do this, you can just turn the cuff over and guesstimate it, but I prefer to put these pins in all the way around and then I know that the cuff is in the right place. So once you've measured all the way around, Start at the seam, just because that's a bit thicker, and fold that over so it meets up with that pin mark and then pin it into place. And now you can fold the cuff, the whole of the top edge over and then make sure that the top stitch edge matches that pin mark. I like to just pin these together at this stage. It's just a little bit easier to press if it's pinned into place. And you know that you'll get a nice even cuff. And you can see now that the lining is showing on the outside. So you can see why it was important we did the top stitching from that side. And then press it into place. Because it's a small tube, it's easier if you press it from the inside because then you can get your iron inside. So this is just to press the top edge over. Once you've pressed it all the way around, make sure that the lining is lay laying flat inside. You can then take out those pins. And you can see now that the cuff is turned over by exactly the same amount all the way around. So it's just a little bit neater. And your storage pot is now finished. All that's left to do is put a tin inside. You can see it's fully lined and very beautiful. The easiest way to do it is put the tin upside down and then put the storage pot on, on top. I've designed and measured these so they fit nice and snugly because you don't want them loose or they will look untidy and less professional. So just ease the pot, the fabric pot, over the tin. If you want the pot to stick up a little bit above the tin, then just make the move the cuff upwards. Finishing touch. If you want to add a little extra finishing touch, you can paint your tin. Use a paint that will paint onto metal and paint all of the inside tin round the top and then down the front side a little bit just to make it seamless. These um, instant coffee tins are also really good to use instead of a food tin. They slip nicely inside so you can use those if you prefer because they are the, pretty much the same size. So now pop all of your tins inside. You don't have to paint them, that's just an optional finishing touch if you want to. For the syrup tin, you can see I've put that in. Again, if you want your pot to stick above the tin, just adjust it slightly. Now, with the syrup tins and the coffee tins, they come with their own lids as well, which is quite useful if you want to keep things safely secured inside. So we've got the tall tin, which sits above the actual tin, two regular tins, two small tins, and one large tin, which is really good for the extra items. And there you are, your storage of pots is ready to fill.